Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mark. Welcome back. Well, we are about 30 hours away from taking off. Today, I'm going to show you how I pack my boat for a long road trip. We're going to talk about grease and air pressure. I bought a new rubber seal for this side. It's been slinging a little grease. I found a little hairline crack in the rubber seal. So you want to watch that. Otherwise, a, you're losing grease, and B, it's flinging everywhere. So I kind of cleaned it up. I gotta do a better job. Let's get the cover off. Boat's been outside for a couple months, which I'm not real happy about. It wasn't ideal, but come Saturday, it'll be back inside. We have about a 1,300 mile drive from Tucson to our house in Missouri. It's important that you pack it properly and you prepare it properly, or you could have a lot of trouble. I'm gonna take this cover off. We'll get into how I pack the boat for those kind of trips. Gotta clean all this up. This was just while it was parked, but we're gonna go ahead and make sure that everything in here is tight. All right. How I like to organize my rear storage facility here is I have 11 3700 size tackle trays. I've got two smaller kits in behind them underneath the paddle. One's full of craws, one's full of crappie gear. I got some miscellaneous stuff. I got terminal tackle on this guy and this is kind of like my go to the, the pond box. Two big trays full of soft plastics. Of course, my buoys with ropes, a 50 foot rope. I also keep a spinnerbait box in here, which is very handy. I keep it pretty simple back there, and it also affords me just enough room for two life jackets. And that's what she looks like right there, folks. Everything's in there nice and snug. The number one thing you want to remember, guys, always, always, when you're traveling, lock this especially if you don't have the cover on if you have the cover off this this can pop open and stuff can fly out i can attest i've lost one life jacket because we're going on a long trip i'm going to remove the tarova don't ever lose this guy this is what locks your tarova into that mount up front so you don't want to lose this but what i have is the tarova is stuffed underneath the casting deck. And then I got the head resting on the step here. It's locked in here real well. It's not going anywhere, which is key. You don't want this thing sliding around. I also have my butt seat oh, just on the floor here. Another important thing, I never travel at all, no matter how far, whether it's two hours or 20, with the fish finders installed. You can see, the Elite 9 is removed, and up front, the cover's covering that, but the, the Humminbird is off as well. They're in a backpack. They'll go in the car with me. They're computers, guys. And just to have that thing rattle around for 1,300 miles, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's, that's just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Whenever I travel, I keep it extremely simple. I take tools, things like wire strippers, electrical tape, butt splices in case you have trouble with your trailer plug, which I have had in the past. I have an impact driver that can handle changing the tire on this trailer. So that I think is the key thing. It's no big deal. All that stuff I keep in that cooler just for the trip. And then obviously when I'm not using it as a travel device, I use it as a cooler. One other thing I do don't mind the spare tire that doesn't ride right here. I leave the seats installed when I travel. That helps the cover kind of tighten down better. If you, if you don't have them on, it's a lot looser. You don't travel with the poles on. Uh, some people do it and uh, I don't. I've driven this boat nearly 18,000 miles, uh, eight, almost 8,000 miles when I went to New York and back without the poles. You don't need the poles. I think the key, I think the key to traveling long distance, especially is to keep it simple. 
don't put too much stuff in your boat too much stuff bouncing around in there is no good it's gonna bang around and hit stuff in the live well or a roll of paper towels and two two rod holders and that's it like i said i leave the seats installed not on the post just the seat in the receptacle there on the deck that helps give the cover some shape and that's all you really need this is what it's going to look like with the cover off now i'm going to put the cover on it and that's how we're going to roll i'm going to show you one other thing that's really important to take with you on a long trip give me one minute i'm going to put the cover on real quick one other thing before i put the cover on a lot of people talk about, you know, how do you store your rods on your boat? Well, this is another real simple thing that I came up with. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I have screwed in a little self tapper right here with a bungee and then another screw down in here. You can see that. And I fan them out. Pull it down. It's not a lot of pressure, but it's enough pressure. And then I have the same situation right here. And I wrap it a couple times to a small screw right here. They're not going anywhere. I travel with those. I've done that since I went to New York and everything has been perfect. It works great whether you have the cover on or off. Something that I always do, I get it on the front of the boat first and then I work my way back. I found after a lot of trial and error that it just, it fits better that way and it's easier to just put on. The front is on, I'm working my way back. I am going to strap it behind the motor first. Then I'm gonna cinch everything tight and do all the support straps all the way around. That works for me. I'm sure there's more than one way to skin a cat. And it's ready to travel now. So I'm gonna show you guys the kit I take in the car. It's full of crap, but it's, it's necessary if you get in trouble. Okay, in this kit, I have an extra cord. I have an extra charging setup, battery tender. I have my vinegar and water to clean the boat. Some WD-40. I don't know why that Klein tool bag's in there, but I'll take it out when we get there. But I have a jacks, jack stands, tire irons, lights, everything that you need if you have trouble on the road is in here. It's not much to put them in a bin. You probably don't need all of that if you're going to your local lake, but when you're going 1300 miles, very important. Something else, you guys, I know it's a little messy, but I keep the old straps just in case. You never know when you're gonna need some ratchet straps. Even though these aren't ideal, it's nice to have backup. Also, just a stupid piece of wood, right? You might not have level ground when you're changing a tire. You might need a chalk. That might save your day someday. That little 4x4 that's about 14 inches long. All right, guys. We are going to grease the hubs right now. The Zerg fittings on each side. I use the Lucas Red and Tacky. I find that it's the best all around for, for my trailer. So I'll show you how I do that. I also bought some new seals. One of mine was leaking and it was slinging mud all over the rim. You'll kind of see that here. So all of this was coming. This was the seal that came with it and it has a crack in it. You can't see it, but it's up in here. I picked these up on Amazon. I think I got a pair of them for about six bucks. I test fitted it. That's why it's got a little bit of smoo on it. I think these fit 
tighter and it's a nicer fit for this application. Anyway, I am going to apply the grease. And what I do is I squeeze it until I see it come out. Just a little bit, there we go. We have our squeeze out there. And that's where I stop. You don't wanna fill this whole thing with grease. That's not necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and put the new seal on. And it fits a lot neater in here. It's called a Dexter Easy Lube. It's a size 31, 85-1. It's a perfect fit. You can find these on Amazon all day long and uh, I, I recommend them. Let's go do the other side. These tires, where does it say? Max pressure, 50 PSI. That is the max pressure, okay? A lot of people will say 50, 50, 50. I keep mine somewhere between 42 and 45. Why? Because the trailer will bounce a lot less, 100%. If anybody here is ever four wheel drive, they know about pressure and adding and taking away, depending on your terrain. And when you're going 75 miles an hour on these, trust me, these are going to inflate a little bit. So I wouldn't worry about it. I would do what's right for you. But I found that 42 to 45 is a much smoother ride. All right, same as the other side. This one's a lot cleaner. As you can see, this one doesn't get a lot of action. So it seals actually pretty good, but I'm gonna change it anyway and keep the old one just in case. But you always wanna clean it up the best you can before you get started. Just like the other side, get her on. We're gonna pump. See, we're already seeing flow, so they're nice and packed. We got the new one here. Goes on nice and smooth. Boom. She's on there. That's all there is to that. Keep the old one in the case that the new ones came in because they do have grease on them and they will make a mess. This is just a cheap grease gun, you guys. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them, but you do have to be careful. I didn't tighten that down good enough. See that? Also, very important to have locks on your hitch as well. I also locked the receiver. You guys can see that kind of bright but I always lock this receiver I don't really see the value in just locking the tongue if they can just pull the pin and take the whole receiver and put it in theirs and go home you want to lock them both if somebody wants it bad enough they'll figure it out but uh, the best thing to do is try to deter them so locks all right guys that's how I travel with my boat especially long distances I'm sure there's a lot of people that do things differently, similar. It doesn't really matter as long as you're prepared and you're safe. Have a great night. We'll see you guys in Missouri. Take it easy.